Four engines, higher fuel burn, and stricter emissions rules. That's what grounded British Airways, Qantas, and Air France's 747 fleets. Still, Lufthansa flies more passenger 747s than anyone else in the world. Not only that, they have already committed to keeping their newest 747-8s in service well into the 2030s. But the other airlines have preferred to wait instead for the delayed 777-X. The question is, why are they sticking to their queens? Why does Lufthansa keep flying the 747 against all logic? Why Lufthansa still flies the 747? If you want to understand why Lufthansa is still flying the 747 when everyone else sent theirs to the scrapyard, you have to start in Frankfurt. This airport is suffocating right now. Every gate is filled, every runway slot is booked, and every extra flight request is treated like asking for a miracle. Lufthansa, sitting at the center of Europe, faces a dilemma. How do they move more passengers and more cargo without being granted more space to do it? That's where the 747 still earns its crown. Most modern widebodies like the Airbus A350 or Boeing 787 are efficient, yes, but they cap out at around 300 to 350 seats. Lufthansa's 747-8, with its stretched fuselage and two decks, handles 364 passengers in its current premium heavy layout. And it doesn't stop there. Its belly can carry up to 30 tons of cargo on the same flight. In a single slot, Lufthansa moves not just more people than competitors, but also more high-yield freight. When you are slot-starved at Frankfurt, that difference helps you survive. And survival in this business comes down to margins. Those extra 100 passengers on a single flight translate to around 700 more seats per week between Frankfurt and New York. Over the course of a year, that's more than 36,000 passengers who might otherwise end up flying with a competitor. Multiply that across Los Angeles, Tokyo, Delhi, and other premium markets, and you start to see why Lufthansa refuses to let go of a plane everyone else abandoned. But the fact that needs to be noticed here is that not all passengers are equal. On the 747, Lufthansa chases yield and not volume. The jumbo is packed with business and first-class cabins that cater to corporate travelers and the wealthy elite. A lie-flat business seat from Frankfurt to JFK can sell for $8,000, first class in the nose, which is one of the most unique spots in aviation, ahead of the pilots, with a curved wall, which creates natural privacy, goes for closer to $15,000. Lufthansa knows exactly who its 747s are built for, the passengers who make up 20% of the seats but drive 80% of the profits. The funny thing is, Lufthansa has been playing this game longer than almost anyone. Their relationship with the 747 started in April 1970, making them only the second airline to fly it commercially. And unlike airlines that treated the type as temporary, Lufthansa doubled down. They took nearly every version Boeing built, from the early 747-100s to the classic 747-200s, the 747-400s workhorses, and finally 747-8 Intercontinental, which they remain the largest operator of today. That's more than 50 years of accumulated experience. The data, the training, and the maintenance culture is all in embedded into the airline's DNA. That heritage pays dividends in ways that we often underestimate. Take pilot training, for example. Lufthansa has thousands of crew members trained and certified on the 747. Retraining all of them onto a different type would cost millions and take years. Or look at maintenance. Lufthansa has refined procedures for the jumbo that make it almost second nature for its ground teams. While British Airways looked at its 747 fleet and saw only rising costs, Lufthansa had decades of efficiency built in. Another piece that keeps the 747 attractive is the unique architecture. No other jet has the iconic upper deck, the wide nose, or the cavernous belly. These parts create many advantages. The upper deck serves as a quieter, more private business class cabin that corporate travelers love. The nose is perfect for first class suites. It offers space no A350 or 777 can replicate, and the belly makes room for cargo that smaller twins simply cannot carry. When airlines talk about maximizing revenue per slot, the 747's unusual design still punches above its weight. Cargo especially cannot be ignored. Lufthansa's 747s don't just shuttle passengers across oceans. They carry high-value goods at the same time. Pharmaceuticals, electronics, and luxury products fill the hold beneath premium travelers sipping champagne above. That dual revenue model makes every flight more profitable than it looks on paper. It was Lufthansa's belly freight on the 747 that became a hidden lifeline when e-commerce boomed and supply chains were tightened. The pandemic proved that point. In 2020, when airlines around the world parked their 747s in dusty storage yards, Lufthansa kept theirs flying. Passenger numbers were too low, but the demand for cargo was high. Lufthansa converted passenger jumbos into temporary freighters. They ripped out seats and filled the cabin with shipments. While competitors bled money keeping planes idle, Lufthansa's 747s were earning. That agility gave the airline even more confidence that the queen of the skies was not finished. Now the question is, if this aircraft provides so many benefits, why don't other carriers use it? 
Well, of course, efficiency is still the elephant in the room. Four engines drink more fuel than two. That's why the 747 is considered obsolete almost everywhere else. But Lufthansa's 747-8s are not the gas guzzlers of the 1970s. They run on advanced General Electric Genex 2B engines. These are about 15% more fuel efficient than older versions. Not only that, the planes are fully paid off. This means there are no giant leasing bills to cover. So, the economics tilt in Lufthansa's favor. What looks crazy for another airline looks workable, even profitable for them. So when people ask why on earth does Lufthansa still fly the 747, the answer is that it's their operational necessity and part of their long-term planning. Frankfurt's slot limits force them to go big. Premium heavy routes demand capacity and luxury. Cargo fills the gaps and boosts revenue and decades of 747 experience make it all possible. Every time a Lufthansa 747-8 pushes back from the gate in Frankfurt, they squeeze the maximum value out of a single slot. While other airlines bowed to the twin-engine revolution, Lufthansa figured out how to keep four engines profitable in a world that declared them dead. And that's why, against every piece of logic you have heard from the rest of the aviation industry, Lufthansa is still betting big on the queen of the skies. But there is one more reason why Lufthansa held on to this aircraft. It had a card no one else held. Lufthansa Technic, the Lufthansa Technic Advantage. Lufthansa Technic is one of the largest aircraft maintenance operations in the world. Think of it as an empire spread across Germany and beyond, with giant hangars filled with stripped-down jets, laboratories testing every component, and workshops where mechanics can rebuild an engine from scratch. While other airlines depend on third parties for even the smallest repair, Lufthansa has the muscle in-house. That meant their costs looked completely different. A grounded jet is usually a nightmare. Every day out of service bleeds money. For Lufthansa, a snag does not mean they have to wait weeks for a part. They can fabricate components themselves, even use 3D printing for pieces that are no longer available. Instead of being at the mercy of suppliers, they control the pipeline from start to finish. Now, the question is why others could not compete. Look at British Airways. When one of their 747s needed major work, they had to ship the engine off to a specialist contractor. The bills increased due to labor costs, shipping fees, and the downtime while the plane sat useless. Multiply that across a fleet, and it becomes too huge a bill to manage. Qantas faced the same spiral. In Australia, there was not much expertise to keep aging jumbos in shape. Parts became harder to find, engineers trained on 747s were retiring, and outsourcing the work grew ever more expensive. The numbers simply didn't add up. Lufthansa changed that equation. Because Technic serviced not only their own aircraft but also jets from dozens of other carriers, their operation achieved scale. More aircraft meant lower costs per job. The revenue from outside clients subsidized the work on Lufthansa's own 747s. What sank BA and Qantas became profitable for Lufthansa. In simple words, they used vertical integration as a survival strategy. See, in aviation, every airline faces two huge fixed costs, aircraft and maintenance. Lufthansa owned both. They bought their 747s outright, avoiding the crushing lease payments that drained other carriers. And they owned the maintenance chain through Technic, cutting out the middlemen that make aircraft servicing one of the most expensive lines in any airline's budget. That's vertical integration at its sharpest. While the rest of the industry chased short-term savings through outsourcing, Lufthansa built an ecosystem that made it self-reliant. Their 747s are now assets that can be kept productive at costs no competitor can touch. Nowhere was that clearer than during COVID. When passenger traffic collapsed overnight, airlines around the world parked their entire fleets in deserts. They paid millions just to store aircraft safely. Parking isn't free. Jets need to be preserved against heat, sand, and engine corrosion. The bills stacked up while the planes earned nothing. Lufthansa didn't play that game. Because Technic was backing them, they converted their 747s into cargo carriers almost immediately. The pandemic created a boom in freight demand, including medical supplies, electronics, e-commerce shipments, and Lufthansa's jumbos flew day and night to complete that demand, while others sat grounded. Every flight generated revenue. Every flight helped offset the passenger crisis. That move was only possible because they had full control of their fleet and the technical backbone to keep it running. But Lufthansa's advantage is not only about cutting costs, they are also creating revenue. Walk onto one of their updated 747-8s today, and you will find cabins that feel more like a designer hotel than an aging widebody. This is the Allegris Retrofit Program, a billion euro investment to redefine what flying on a jumbo means. The first class cabin is a private suite with walls, a door, a double bed, and a curved 43-inch screen. And the thing is, this design is only possible on the 747. That bulbous nose up front creates space no twin jet can replicate. Even the upper deck plays a role. It feels like a private lounge in the sky, a feature Airbus and Boeing's newer twins cannot match. Lufthansa is leaning into that uniqueness, turning it into a selling point. 
Business travelers don't just want to get from A to B, they want comfort, privacy, and an experience. And premium passengers account for nearly 80% of the profits on long-haul routes. By stuffing more premium seating into the 747-8 than any A350 or 777 can manage, Lufthansa turns each flight into good revenue. Of course, rolling out Allegris has not been smooth. Retrofitting a double-decker giant takes time. Right now, passengers might board a 747-8 with half the cabin updated and half still showing its age. Supply chain disruptions and certification hurdles have dragged the process out, but the shocker part is that demand has not slowed. Aviation enthusiasts rebook flights just to fly on these aircraft. Business travelers choose them over newer twins because of the space and privacy. Even with the hybrid cabin, the queen of the skies still outperforms. If you take a drive through Mojave in California or Alice Springs in Australia, you will see rows of abandoned 747s with faded paint, engines wrapped, wings gathering dust. For most airlines, the jumbo was a symbol of the past. It was too expensive to justify, but Lufthansa's 747s are the opposite. They are maintained in pristine condition, upgraded for the future and profitable in ways rivals cannot replicate. That's the power of having your own maintenance empire. The future of Lufthansa. The truth is, no matter how much love Lufthansa has for the 747, the clock is ticking. Four engines in a world obsessed with efficiency will always be an uphill battle. Governments, environmental watchdogs, and even passengers are now asking how long an airline can defend flying a plane that burns more fuel than a twin jet. And the pressure is not just some random comments. The European Union has locked itself into some of the strictest climate goals in the aviation world. By 2035, airlines will be under heavy scrutiny to slash emissions, and regulators are unlikely to give exemptions just because a plane is iconic. Lufthansa knows this. They have already ordered dozens of A350s and 787s as part of their fleet renewal. Both these models are designed to be far greener than the Jumbo, but the twist here is that Lufthansa has positioned the 747 as a flagship, not a relic. The 747-400s are already on borrowed time. Most will leave service within the next few years. Yet the 747-8s, which are the youngest, delivered as recently as 2015, are staying. They will likely be the last passenger jumbos in Europe. That creates a fascinating paradox. On paper, they clash with every efficiency narrative. But in practice, they deliver the prestige that no twin jet can. Ask any Lufthansa executive, and they will admit the 747-8 is not the cheapest plane in their hangar. But it is the most visible. Whenever one taxis past an A350 at Frankfurt, it still draws every phone out of every pocket. The queen of the skies is marketing gold. Lufthansa leverages the emotional pull of flying the jumbo when everyone else gave up to differentiate itself from rivals like Air France and BA. They have tied their brand identity to a machine. The controversy is that not everyone buys it. Environmental groups have repeatedly called Lufthansa out for clinging to the 747. In 2021, the airline was criticized for operating near-empty jumbos on short transatlantic runs during scheduling disruptions, a move activists called fuel waste disguised as tradition. Lufthansa defended the flights as operational necessities, but their excuse is not good enough. And yet, the airline doubles down. They argue that premium heavy cabins make the 747 more efficient than critics admit. If one jumbo replaces two smaller jets on high-demand routes, the fuel burn per passenger can actually look competitive. It's a razor-thin defense, but in aviation, optics often matter as much as numbers. The real secret weapon for Lufthansa is cargo. Even if passenger demand softens, the belly space of a 747-8 is unmatched. Lufthansa Cargo already flies dedicated 777 freighters, but the jumbo's sheer volume remains useful when markets spike. This dual role gives Lufthansa flexibility that few competitors can match. It's not hard to imagine a future where passenger service on the minus eights gradually winds down, but the same airframes live on as freighters. Boeing designed the 747-8 with that very transition in mind. Lufthansa could keep the queen flying in cargo colors well into the 2040s, long after the last champagne has been poured in first class. Still, the near-term gamble is passenger demand. Lufthansa is betting big on premium travel bouncing back stronger than ever. If the market holds, the economics work. If it doesn't, the 747s become harder to defend. And there's one more risk. The 777X. Once it finally arrives in Lufthansa's fleet later this decade, it could make the jumbo redundant. The 777X promises twin-engine efficiency with nearly the same cabin size. Airlines that already killed their 747s will be watching closely to see if Lufthansa finally bows to the inevitable. What do you think? Should they finally give it up? Share your opinion with us in the comments below. And before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss the latest aviation updates. We will keep you in the loop. Goodbye for now.